I have just finished rebuilding the M5 competition, but now I'm back at BMW for one of the most stupidest reasons imaginable. Here goes nothing. My M5 was cheap. One of the cheapest in the world. <laughs> Mainly because it was in a major accident and it needed a repair that only trained technicians could do. But I attempted it anyway. And today we have to finish rebuilding the M5, <laughs> drive it for the first time, <laughs> see if it was still cheap, was it worth it, and then take it back to BMW. Now there's some obvious things that need fixing on the M5 and some not so obvious. And well, this is one of them. Even though I bought a brand new battery for the M5 because the other one was flat, I still have to jumpstart it with a battery pack. And uh, well, let me explain why. The BMW comes with a lithium battery, which is super expensive, and mine was completely flat. So instead, I tried to replace it with a normal lead battery, which was still 250 pounds, which worked for a little bit, yeah, and then stopped working. Now it should start now with the battery pack connected. No problem at all. Just check the clocks out here. If I give it a rev, the clock's dot. It, li it literally doesn't even have enough power for it to rev and it doesn't seem to charge the battery. So quite clearly, I can't get away with using a normal battery on it. It even has a power supply fault on the dashboard. And although it does drive in and out the unit, it doesn't last long before it turns off. So I've literally had no choice but to buy a brand new one from BMW, which was just short of 642 pounds. Now we all know how expensive lithium batteries are. Now the good news is the bumper, the bonnet, and both front wings, fenders if you're American, have all been painted. We'll get to the price later, but for now, I need to get these fitted onto the car and it's gonna to start to look more like an M5 after this. We're starting things off simple. We've got to take the front wheel off so we can get the wing on. And now it's been painted, it's going to start to make the car look more complete. There's a few bolts on top of the wing, inside the wing, and then one where you have to open the door to access it at the top. On the driver's side wing as well, there's also a washer bottle which sits inside. This holds all the fluid for the screen wash. And then finally, the M5 trims. And then it's exactly the same for the passenger side, apart from this one doesn't have a washer bottle inside of it. Both wings are on. The next step, which could be an expensive one, it actually turns out it wasn't too bad. Now you see the loom on the front and it's got all these different plugs. I've actually found out where these plugs come from now. And the main issue would have been if this car has a radar sensor for that adaptive cruise control which follows the car in front. But we know we've not got that because on the steering wheel, there's no button here for adaptive cruise control to follow the car in front. So I didn't need to buy the radar, but the plug on the loom is still there. But I'll tell you what there is these two things, which are parking assist things. Yes, hey. that's how it goes in. I'll just cut the rest of that out. We then realized there was no part of the loom which actually plugged into those parking assist sensor things. It looks like we don't need it. I don't, I don't think we need it. I might have to take them out and I could just resell them maybe, or I could have them in and confuse the next owner to think, why are these not plugged in? We'll see, let's put it together. So potentially I could have saved some money on those parking sensor things, but I could always sell them. Next thing to go in is the little camera which goes between the kidney grills. And after that, the car needs an ambient air temperature sensor. Problem was, there was two plugs which this could potentially go in. Only way to find out which one it was, was for Liam to get in the car. Yep, yep, straight away. Yeah, yep. Sensational. Next up, it's the kidney grills. I got these cheap from eBay because they're not genuine ones, they're copy ones, but I don't think you can tell the difference. And almost the final piece of the puzzle is the front bumper. 
and it's really starting to come together now. But we are missing the arch linings on both sides, so we're going to have to order them from BMW. Now with this on like this, we can see whether the parking sensors work, because if they don't, we've got to jack it back up. In drive. Yeah! Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The beep it and, and the camera. The camera, the camera, the camera's on! <laughs> <laughs> no, it's oh, yeah. Shredded, you've shredded your belt when you're doing that. Oh yeah. Okay, there could be an issue, which uh, I knew was an issue, but thought I could probably get away with it. So this and this is part of my auxiliary belt. I remember when I put the auxiliary belt on, it looked like the bottom pulley was a little bit bent. Uh, but when I ran it, everything ran fine. But I did order, I did order a new pulley, um, but, I put the whole front end on before fitting it, thought oh, I'll be okay, and now clearly not. So um, maybe I should uh, put this on. Lesson learned, I should have just changed it in the first place. Because now it is right down there and the radiator fan is pretty much in the way. So even though there's a super tight gap to access the four bolts, I somehow still managed to get it off. At this point, I'm hoping it is actually this that's bent and not the bit on the end of the crank because, well, it looks straight, but I don't know. Let's put on the new one. So with more tight squeezing, getting it down, I managed to get the new one on. And just to test whether that was actually a thing that was bent or not, I put back on the old damaged belt. I made sure everything sat in place, started the car, and it all looked good. We just needed a new auxiliary belt. Yes! It worked. We just need a new belt and then we can carry on the rest of the car. Come on! So a new auxiliary belt is on order, along with the front arch linings as well. But in the meantime, I could put everything back together. Right, whilst we get a belt and everything, we might as well figure out why we have this airbag light still on even though we replaced all the airbags i was hoping it was just a case of clearing fault codes but it turned out not knee airbag driver resistance too low right so knee airbag which is under there there was a fault with the knee airbag and if you remember we bought a brand new one from bmw in the previous videos you can see here so there's got to be something wrong with either the airbag or the wiring going to it I removed the knee airbag, but everything looked fine. And so did the wiring go into it. So we've got to now test whether there's any faults with the knee airbag. The maximum it's meant to be is 5.4 and the minimum it's meant to be is 1.3 and it's zero. So the airbag was reading zero ohm when it was plugged in and 25 ohm when it wasn't plugged in. So the airbag is shorting out when it's plugged in, indicating it's a problem with the airbag. But the only thing I could do now is install it back in place because I wanted to get the car on the road. But later, we'll try and return it to BMW. So it's defective then? Yeah. Because it's plugged in. Yeah, it's defective. It is defective, so... It's collided. Looks like we're going to BMW tomorrow. For a lot of things. For a lot of things, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We are now so close to getting the M5 back on the road for the first time since the accident. But one thing that we haven't done is put fresh oil in it, which is gonna be needed, especially as this will be going on the dyno later in the video. This car also came with no service history. In fact, the only real history we can find out of the car is on the car vertical check. And we can see straight the way that there's been no mileage fraud. It's not been recorded as stolen, but of course it's been in an accident. And there's no outstanding finance. Now what's quite interesting is that we can see every time an ownership's been changed and when it's had a personal registration plate put on the car. There's only two mileage records showing it's under 10,000 miles, which is correct. And I can see when the car was written off and what category it was. And on some reports, if your car was in an accident and auctioned off, it'll even show you photos from the car crash auction website, which is pretty handy. 
So go and check your car or a car you're potentially about to buy with the link in the description box below and use my code for some discount as well. It works in over 20 different countries. Hence why I'm here. Cheers car vertical. Oil filter changed and by now BMW have delivered the rest of the under trays and the front arch linings as well. As for the knee airbag, well that's a different story and we're gonna have to cover that later in the video. But the front arch linings are now in, looking really smart, along with the rest of the under trays. Down comes the M5, and in goes nine and a half litres of oil. And then last, but definitely not least, the freshly painted bonnet, which Hannah has come to help me put on. This is gonna be one of the most fiddliest part of the jobs, getting the bonnet and all the panel gaps lining up correctly. Best way I've found is leave the bonnet loose, close it without the bonnet latches and edge it around till you get it perfect. And there it is, all the engine and the engine plastics all in place. Looking really smart. And that is one BMW M5. The satisfaction is real. And actually, Hannah, I'm gonna let you do because you love oh, BMW no. so much. <laughs> You're gonna get to do the final piece. I'm gonna put it on wonky. <laughs> no, I don't think you can. You can do it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you like it now? No. No. <laughs> well, I think it looks pretty cool, but. <laughs> Everyone has seen a standard-ish BMW M5. And now this is where things get interesting before we go and drive it. Time to add some modifications. Now what's better than no splitter? A carbon fibre front splitter, of course. So now that's exactly what me and Hannah are fitting. And the black standard rear diffuser is good and all, but what's better than that? Of course, a carbon fibre rear diffuser as well. So me and Hannah are fitting one of them. Also with the carbon fibre diffuser, there's little side spats which also go with it, which look pretty good. Now the standard black spoiler is okay, but what's better than the standard black spoiler? A carbon fibre one, of course. So me and Hannah are gonna fit one of them. But it turns out that the tape provided with the spoiler wasn't as strong as we thought. So we sacked that off and in the end used Tiger Seal to stick the carbon fibre spoiler to the boot lid. The company I bought that carbon stuff off didn't sell the side skirt, so I ended up buying them from eBay. And well, this is what came. It said carbon in the title and quite clearly, look at the state of them. I don't know what it looks like on camera, but they are definitely not carbon. Some kind of fake copy hydro dipped carbon. Well and truly catfished. They're going back. <laughs> now there was still more carbon to fit to the car, but I had an appointment at Wheelmania and I couldn't let them down. So I had no choice but to drive it as it is. Almost forgot number plates. Thanks again, UMR plates always sorts us out with the number plates. Let me get it straight. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit wonky. It's good enough. Let's go. <laughs> well, I got five seconds down the road and I now have a drivetrain fault and I can't take it over 2,000 revs. This car is going to be one of them cars because there's so many sensors on it. Um, I don't know whether this has got anything to do with the induction kit, whether it's got something to do with the exhaust. Don't know. In limp mode or not, I finally made it to Wheelmania. The place for all wheels and wheel refurbishments as well, of course. I don't actually think the stock wheels on the M5 look too bad, but there's definitely room for improvement and to make the car look more like my own. Well, uh, <laughs> I'm missing some of it. My number plates fell off. Okay. Um, Maybe that's why it went into limp mode. Oh, 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 oh. 
I've completely forgot what wheels I ordered because I ordered these wheels when I literally got the car because I was excited to get onto it. So this is going to be my first time actually seeing them in person. Oh, is that them? Okay, they look sick. <laughs> These are the BMW M5 wheels. Got the 11 bit 21 on the rear and nine and a half. 21, I forgot 21 what inch. Um, width I ordered, I inch I ordered. Do you know what? I don't know how, how much they're going to work with the colour of the car. Like, do you reckon they'll. I think it'll be a nice contrast. To you it reckon? Great. Yeah, I think it'll suit. Because everyone's going to want me to go black wheels because they've already got black on, but just um, I'm over black wheels now, so. Let's see what they look like. <laughs> so now that you've seen the alloys, let me know what you think. I'm unsure they'll work with the colour of the car, but worst case, I can get them refurbished here. So when you're trying to find fitment for wheels, what's the process to uh, getting it fitting perfect? Um, just message me personally, and I'll just get the bang on, no space is required. Just WhatsApp the number. WhatsApp the number. And George right. I've been coming to Wheelmania for years now, and they always get the fitment spot on. It's a proper family-owned business which really takes care of the customers. And if you guys need any alloys for your car, I've left their WhatsApp number in the description box below. Let's go blow up their phone. <laughs> but now, the wheels have been fitted. Do you know what? I think it looks 10 out of 10 and I never would have chose this colour but I don't want to show you guys just yet I need to finish this car with all them electrical faults and all sorts before I show you and there's more carbon to go on so back to the unit so interesting first drive in limp mode under 2000 rpm but I've been doing some research and I think I know why but before we get on to that we have some stuff here to fit and some stuff here to fix. So this part of the steering column here, which should move back and forth and up and down, it it doesn't really, oh, sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't work. But this is the perfect time for me to not only change this, because one actually came with the dashboard and I didn't fit it, but also to do another mod as well. First step is to disconnect the battery. And that is because we're going to be removing the steering wheel airbag. And once the steering wheel airbag is removed, then we can loosen the bolt which holds the steering wheel to the steering column. Once that's off, I can then access the bottom panel which is underneath the steering wheel, which has all those switches and the faulty adjustment switch as well. And now I can remove that one and replace it with, hopefully, the good one. Once that's installed, we can move over to the next modification from Premium Bespoke Auto Works. But in able to fit that modification, I've got to completely stripped down the stock steering wheel so I can fit it on to the brand new carbon fiber steering wheel. This is gonna look so good. And I've had this completely customized to my own liking. It's just the case of fitting it back onto the car now and doing everything in reverse. And there it is, one carbon steering wheel with a bronze center line to match the bronze on the front of the car that I've done behind the kidney grills and the blue and red stitching to match the blue and red stitching that is on the seat belts on the car as well. I really thought about this one. So does this work? Yes. Now, this is now working. Carbon steering wheel looks good. But right now, I want to sort the issue out on why this car's in limp mode and won't let me take it above 2,000 revs. Let's do this. So the reason the car's in limp mode is because I've removed the OPF filters out of the exhaust, which aren't actually tested in the UK. But that should give us more power when we tune it, and when we tune it, it shouldn't be in limp mode anymore. <laughs> it's gonna be so loud. To put this theory to the test, I brought the M5 to Mallory Performance. And hopefully after the tune, we'll unleash some serious power. We're just about ready. 618 brake. Not what we're after. 
Well, 617 stock. Okay, we're up to 618. <laughs> Even though the car was in limp mode, we attempted to do one dyno run just before we tuned it. We're looking for 617 bhp. First run, we got 468 bhp um, and a complete drop off in revs. Of course, because of limp mode. <laughs> now Phil's gonna tune the car and let the computers of the car know that I've removed the OPF filters, which should give us more power. It's gonna be noisy. Eh? Seven hundred and eight HP and eight horsepower and eight hundred and one newton meters of torque. That is insane, and that's just like the base map. Do you reckon it can go faster? Probably. Probably. <laughs> We're already making really good power, but Phil was determined to make more. Quicker. Yeah, I've made more. You've made more? 720. Whoa! 720 horsepower. 104 more horsepower than stock. 720 horsepower 802 and 802 newton meters of torque. That is insane. There is a link to Phil's YouTube channel below. Go check it out if you want to see more powers. What does it sound like? That is so loud. Oh my god. That is absolutely nuts. 720 horsepower is insane, but what's it going to be like on the road? This looks like it's going to be one hell of a first drive because it looks like it's about to throw it down and you guys are about to see the car in full, complete-ish for the first time. Let's do it. has made rebuilding this car. All the hours have been worth it for this now. <laughs> what? So, the price, everything, was it worth it? There is another £1,200 to go on this and we've not counted upgrade parts or anything like that because we've had loads of companies help us out so thank you all to those companies that helped us with the upgrade parts and remember also Sitna has helped us out a lot with our special code MAT15 which you can all use in the description for genuine BMW parts which brings the total cost of the build to £41,415. Hang on, hang on. I didn't add the paint. I didn't add the paint. I didn't add the paint. £1,250, which then brings it to £42,665 total build cost. So just over £10,000. I think without the help from other people, there's no way we would have done it. And the cheapest BMW M5 competition, which wasn't previously crashed, with triple the mileage, is £50,499. So maybe we haven't done so bad after all. The question is, was it worth it? For me, I think so. I've rebuilt a car, I've learnt so much from it. But let me know in the comment section below. And now we've came back to BMW for the most stupidest reason ever. Check this out. 
So remember I said earlier in the video about I was getting a fault with the restraint system, the airbags, the knee airbag, which is underneath there. When I went to BMW to pick up the parts earlier in the video, I brought the knee airbag with me back and they said they couldn't return it unless it was actually on the car. So I'm bringing it back now with the airbag connected to the car and everything connected in because their technician has to test it to make sure that it is a faulty airbag so they can return it and s switch it over as well. So, and also, whilst we're here, I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to get the M5 health checked and get all my repairs sort of, well, to see whether they were legit or not. But we're not gonna be able to fit this in this video, unfortunately, but thanks so much for watching this one. If you enjoyed it, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. So that's definitely wrong. That's what it's meant to be. That's what it's not meant to be. And uh, that's what it's not meant to be. And it's not meant to be that. So it's a fault in the airbag. <laughs> <laughs> like a drug there, I just can't deny.